Hey what's up guys? Today I'll show you a horror film, Tumbad. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. This Hindi movie opens up with a meaningful quote from the Indian philosopher, Mahatma Gandhi, where he states, the world has enough for everyone's need, but not for everyone's greed. It seems like the story will revolve around this idea. Tumbad took eight years to be completed. The people who worked behind this, focused on details that will surely leave an impact on every viewer's heart and mind. A father tells a story to his son. First, the father introduces the goddess of prosperity, the symbol of food and limitless gold, also, her womb is the earth. It is said that when the universe was created, she gave birth to 10 million gods, but she only loved one, her firstborn, Haystar. But currently, you will not find his name in any recordings. The father states that it's because he was greedy for all the gold and food, and the other gods attacked him for it. But before he could turn into dust, the goddess of prosperity saved him, but on a condition that he'll never be worshipped, and he slept in his mother's womb for eons. But an ancestor woke him up, and built a shrine under his name. Since then the village was cursed, and it never stopped raining. The boy asks why they have to wake him up, and it's revealed that this is because Haystar is a boon to them. The scene flashbacks to the year 1918 in Tumbad village, western India. It is raining so hard. We see an old person lying on the bed, who seems to be a local lord, later on introduced as Sarkar. There's a woman giving him sexual services. Afterward, she reminds him of his promise that he'll give her the gold coin in this coming new moon, but he states that earning it is never easy. The camera zooms into a creepy small statue which seems to be Haystar, who has that single gold coin in his hands. On the other hand, two kids, Vinayak and Sadashi, are seen waiting for their mother outside their home, even if it is raining so hard. They seem to be anxious by the thought of having to feed the old woman in their house, their great-grandmother. Vinayak instructs Sadashiv to go and do the feeding instead. Sadashiv is afraid. But before he takes another step, his mother calls him and smacks his head, then proceeds to smack Vinayak afterward. Their mother places more food, and approaches the old woman. She gives them a warning look, so the kids step back. She carefully cuts the old woman's toenails. The kid helps their mom shave her head again, and asks if she was given an old coin. The kid receives a slap for swearing. He clarifies that they won't look after the grandmother, unless she gives them the coin. His mom says the gold coin is no joke anyway. Right then, we hear some coughs and whimpering. So the mother stands up, and tries to go to where the old woman is. We can hear her wail, let me go. I don't want it, and I don't want the treasure. Their mother kneels to the small opening with a lamp in her other hand. She shushes the old lady without entering her room, telling her to sleep or else Haystar will come for her. The next day, Sarkar passes away. The mother takes her children, and runs towards their house, and cooks food. She tells Vinayak that Sarkar is dead, and they'll start packing up and leave the Tumbad village now, since nothing's left for them there. Vinayak asks why can't they inherit the mansion instead, but the mother says that they'll still starve in there, for it's not worth anything. The son asks about the hidden treasure in the mansion, but the mother says Sarkar was not even able to find it himself. Vinayak suggests waking the chained up grandmother. Their mother tells him to try, and wake her up instead. The kids converse outside. But later on, Sadashi falls off a tree and bleeds. The mother rushes during the night, in the hope to get treatment for her son, and instructs Vinayak to feed the old woman this time, and tells him that if she wakes up, tell her to sleep, or else Haystar will come for her. Vinayak is now all alone in that house. He lights up a lamp, as the mother weeps for Sadashi, who dies along the way. The mother asks the driver of the cart to take her to the mansion instead. We'll see Vinayak panicking and struggling, and flour falling all over him. Vinayak hears babbles from the room where his grandmother is. He walks towards the room, and peeks under the curtain, then finally opens the door revealing the monstrous appearance of his grandmother. Her skin seems to be peeled off, while there were huge nails on her face. She keeps babbling, and avoids the light from Vinayak's lamp. She picks up some containers in search of food. Vinayak realizes it, and rushes back to the kitchen. The audio scoring in this scene would leave chills all over your body, because it emphasized that something would happen if the grandmother wasn't fed on time. He tries to recall how the food is prepared anxiously, but right then, Chain's rustling halts him. To his surprise, his great-grandmother chains him by the ankle, and drags him with her. Vinayak tries to shove her away using fire, but she's strong enough to pull him, trying to eat him instead. Then, she steps back in fear, when Vinayak mentions Haystar's name, causing her to fall asleep. On the other hand, his mother takes the gold coin, 
and returns for Vinayak, crying as she picks him, and then leaves the village by boat. During the ride, the greedy Vinayak pesters his mother. He tells her that there's still more time for them to obtain the treasure. His mother shuts her protesting son with a gold coin, but he's not satisfied with it. As the rain falls, the mother forces him to promise never to return to Tumbad, but Vinayak seems to be persistent in searching for that treasure. Vinayak grows up independently after 15 years. He arrives in Tumbad before nightfall with a gasoline drum, and enters their old house that is now full of spiderwebs and wild branches inside, like it has become one with nature. He finds a chain that's still on his great-grandmother, but then finds a dusty beating heart attached to the woods. He tries to wake up his grandmother, who spits blood afterward. He laughs maniacally when the old woman speaks. This is the part where we'll realize his true intention in coming back, although he jokingly points out that a tree grew on her. He asks why she wasn't banished after her husband died, and she replies by saying, it's because they needed her since she can go down the well faster. Then she warns him to never go down there, or he'll be cursed like her. Vinayak asks her where it is, and bribes her that he'll give her half, if she tells him where it is. But his grandma only wanted freedom. She asked him to burn her, for her eternal hunger can't perish, but he can make the pain go away. She says that he can choose to go back to that mansion where the treasure is located, but not everything he inherits should be claimed. Vinayak's now doing what he can, to unlock the gates of the mansion. His desperation to escape poverty gave birth to his greed. Many days pass by, and he never stops digging and clearing up his way to find the well. He fulfills the wish of his grandmother, and sets her on fire. He returns to Pune city, and finds his wife, who was actually looking for him. She tells him that she has no money left, so she starts a business of wheat. Vinayak meets up with someone whom he's indebted to, and offers him the gold coin in order to pay it off. That man is Raghav, an opium merchant, who is now wondering where he got it from, but Vinayak states that it is ancestral. Every time he needs money, he returns back to Tumba to steal the gold coins. One day, Sergeant Cooper gives Raghav only a few days to come with the money, if he wants to be rich. Upon realization, Raghav visits Vinayak unexpectedly. He proposes to become his business partner, but Vinayak politely rejects it. Vinayak's wife gives birth to a son, and they are now wealthy. Soon enough, Raghav sells his daughter-in-law to Vinayak as a mistress. On the other hand, Raghav visits the mansion in Tumbad, and Vinayak follows him. He probably knows that he wants to find the treasure himself. Vinayak goes down the well, aware that Raghav's watching. Raghav bites on the trap, and attempts to go down the well too. The blood-red mud welcomes him from below, while Vinayak creates dough dolls from above. The well resembles the inside of a womb. It is slimy and bloody. Plus, the walls and floor are breathing. The rope he used falls off, the moment he unleashes a doe doll inside a container. He hears a growl from a distance, and that growling creature attacks him in a snap. Vinay climbs down the well, and sees the mutated Raghav conjoined to the womb's wall. He orders him to sleep, or else Haystar would come for him. Vinay picks the doll and teases Haystar, who is desperate for the flower. In return, the god throws tantrums and mutates Raghav more. Vinayak throws the doll, as he chases and rips Haystar's loincloth. Since the god's distracted, he picks up the gold coins, that spilled out of the loincloth. Vinayak throws the lamp to Raghav to end his suffering. Fourteen years later, Vinayak still goes back and forth to Tumbad. His son is already a grown child, named Ponderong. It seems like he's been training his kids in picking gold coins. The next day, Vinayak brings the enthusiastic Ponderong to Tumbad. Vinayak warns him about what's ahead. They proceed to make dough dolls in preparation for training. Once they are inside the goddess's womb, he orders his son to make a circle out of flour, because Haystar cannot go through it for those are grains. Vinayak explains it further. He also tells his son not to bring a dough doll with him earlier. But since he secretly brought one, Haystar attacks, and almost touches Ponderong if only his father didn't catch him. They climb back up, and his angry father scolds him for not obeying his order, they return back to Pune, and Ponderong's mother interrogates him regarding what he saw back in Tumbad, but he refuses to spill it. Afterward, Vinayak meets with some businessmen, who point out that he should take the opportunity to elevate his status. He finds out that the government will lock up the mansion, and build a new village in Tumbad. Vinayak shows Ponderong his safe, and reveals all the gold there. The next day, Vinayak beats up his son, because he gifts his mistress a coin. Ponderong blurts that they should steal Haystar's loincloth instead, an alibi for his father to stop beating him. Vinayak accepts his son's suggestion, 
they go back to Tumbit and make dolls once again. Unfortunately, there are multiple clones of Haystar, who have started crawling towards them. Indeed, they are multiple now due to the dozens of dolls they made earlier. A one-to-one -one ratio, perhaps? They hold on to each other, probably not expecting it. Binayak throws each piece everywhere to distract the clones, who try to eat one, but fights with each other, since the god himself is just too greedy. Then a clone almost falls to the flower circle. Binayak catches his son, and they both fall down the floor. That clone turns into dust in a blink, since it made contact with the grain. Binayak ignites fire since the light they had earlier died. This is the part where he gets an idea that is just heartbreaking, a sacrifice as a father. There isn't much time and choice. Ponderong wakes up to his father, who had tied the remaining dolls to his body. He will use himself as the bait in order for his son to escape, since he's also the one who took him there with him. Ponderong grabs onto his father, and tries to stop him. But his father shoves him off and takes a leap, so that the Haystar clones would go after him. Ponderong escapes the well, and manages to stand above land. After a little while, Ponderong sees his father struggle hard to approach him, his father babbling now just like his great-grandmother and Raghav. But his son sees his father's state. Vinayak presents Haystar's loincloth, in the hope of fulfilling his son's wish. Ponderong refuses and cries hard, as his father insists for him to take it. With a heavy heart, he throws his lamp at his father, and sets him on fire in order to end his suffering. Then he finally tells his father to sleep or Haystar will come for him. Binayak burns to death, and his son leaves without taking the loincloth, probably realizing that no amount of materialistic treasure is worth a person's life. The ending's very emotional but a fitting one. You got what you wanted, but lost what you already had. In fact, the father and son were both greedy, and it's true that realization only hits you when time's almost up. Haystar symbolizes greed, and greed, in reality, means endlessness. Another poetic thing here is that every victim acts like a baby, who only lives to eat and sleep as if the curse is remaining hungry, even if you had become immortal. That's it for Tumbad. I hope you enjoyed and learned a lot on this journey. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your fun for today.